Hey everyone, it is Wednesday and we are going to do another episode of Winning Wednesday. Hi, I am Regina Callian and I am your NCLEX instructor. My goal is to help you pass your nursing board exam. So I'm here because you may not have studied, maybe your study partner didn't show up, maybe you got busy and you didn't get a chance to go over this topic. And so I got you. I got you today. We're going to go over Glasgow Coma Scale. Come on in. This is remarnurse.com. Yes. So Glasgow Coma Scale, I'm just going to jump right into it. So here, this is um, a widely known tool that is used in neurological assessments. So it is designed to really assess quickly the severity, the depth of the impaired consciousness. And it helps to gauge um, the impact of a wide variety of conditions. So if a patient has brain damage, if they've had a stroke, if they've had brain surgery, it is used to communicate to the other healthcare providers just how severe the damage is. So quick points to know for your NCLEX exam, the highest score you can get on this scale is a 15 and the lowest score you can get is a three. And that really should tell you that there is no, there is always going to be a reason to give somebody a point. That's what I want to say. So from your parameters, there are three main ones that you're going to have to know and memorize. Eye opening response and a perfect score would be a four. The verbal response, you can achieve up to a five on a verbal response. And the motor response is a six. And that would be the perfect score of a 15. Now, most of us here today should have a 15 scoring. All right. But here's what a sample scoring of 13 would look like. So if you had an I performance of three, a verbal performance response of four and a motor response of six, then you would get a 13, okay? So let's dig down deeper into each parameter and look at literally, okay, so how do I score a one or a two or a three in these categories? And so for the eye-opening response, the best score that you could get is, uh, is a spontaneous Four. So that means that the person's eyes are open, they are appropriate to the, um, the environment, so they're open wide, they're looking, and that is a four. If a person only opens their eyes to speech or sound, that is going to be a three. So for example, your patient is laying there and you have to go like, hey, Mr. Jones, wake up. And then when they hear you, they wake up or you know, they're up for a second and then they doze off again. And you're like, hey, wake up, wake up. And then they wake up like kind of like, oh, my goodness, what do you want? So that would be a three. I hope you guys appreciated that reenactment. OK, <laughs> all right. Um, responding with eye opening to pain only is going to be a two. And if there is no response to eye opening, guess what? You don't get a zero. You still can achieve a one point. Now, this is interesting for the Glasgow Coma Scores. If a person is in T, that means it is not tested. It cannot be tested. Can you think of some reasons why your client would not be able to demonstrate an eye-opening response? Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about the setting again that we would be doing a Glasgow Coma Score. So the setting of these these patients are usually, they're usually like, you know, ICU situations, uh, trauma situations where you need to have a rapid assessment of somebody's mentation. So we're going to be thinking if, if a person has, you know, periorbital edema, if they have some sort of trauma, or even if there's a dressing there on their eyes that you cannot disrupt as the nurse, instead of trying to look under it or, or, injure your patient possibly, just go ahead and put, put an NT there. The verbal response, how do you get a perfect score? A perfect score is you're oriented, you're, you know, you're, you're speaking intelligibly, clearly, the answers make sense, right? 
your orientation is fine. A four, it says confused, but able to answer questions. So what does that mean? You're confused, but you're able to answer questions. So you may be confused mentally about your situation and your surroundings, but if I asked you a question, you can answer it appropriately. So you might be like, yeah, this is a weird spaceship that I'm on right now. And the year is 1972. So confused. But if I say, do you want some lunch? Are you hungry? You say, yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Or do you have pain anywhere? And it's like, nope, nope, no pain. I'm feeling good. I do have some arthritis, but right now I have no pain, right? So this kind of answer would get a four. Inappropriate words is going to be a three. Incomprehensible words will be a two. And no response, no response by your client is going to be a one. So again, not a zero, but a one. And um, can you think of some reasons? Again, just put them in the chat box. I want to see your responses. Why? a patient would be not testable, why your patient would not be able to give you a verbal response if they are in, I don't know, if they're in the ICU setting, if they're in a trauma setting, why would a patient not be able to give you a response? And just think about it. So for instance, if your patient Oh, yeah, and I see it. So instance, if your patient was intubated, okay, then we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to evaluate this. Okay. Reasons like that. Let's look at motor response because motor response is, I think, what takes the most memorizing because this is the highest number that you can achieve. And the categories can be a little, um, can be a little similar if you're not sure on the terminology. So um, motor response obeys commands and requests. That is, I think that's pretty clear. You tell Mr. Johnson to stand up, he stands up. You tell him to sit down, he sit down, raise both arms. He can follow command. Um, the purposeful movement towards painful stimuli. And again, when we talk about painful stimuli as nurses, we're not trying to um, harm or injure the patient, we're just trying to stimulate a response. So um, some examples of painful stimuli is like the sternum rub, like if you take your two knuckles and you press down on a patient's sternum, that hurts a lot. So you, you would expect to instantly to hear somebody say, ow, like that hurt, you know, or you can um, grab the, the back of the arm, the trapezius muscle back here. And if you just pinch it a little bit, that hurts so bad. And, um, you know, growing up, if you ever acted out in like church or someplace else that you were supposed to be quiet and your mom or your grandma, they like sneakily pinched you at the back of your arm. Mm. Why? Like that is the most painful thing. And it like straightens you up right away. I'm speaking from experience. And the, the thing about it is, if somebody pinches you back here and they're really close, like nobody can really know how painful that is. <laughs> and so it just looks like, you know, they're rubbing your arm, over, but they're killing you with this pinch back here. Anyways, that's another example of a painful stimuli. So if a person moves towards the painful stimuli, that's a five because it's like, hey, like, what are you doing? Like that hurts. Like, get off of me. They're moving towards you. But if they pull back away from it, then that's considered a different type of motor response. And so they're withdrawing from pain. And that's going to be a four. Now the um, flexions in response, flexion or extension. Um, so a flexion in response to pain, the patient is drawing up, they're drawing in the decorticate um, positioning, right? So they're drawing in kind of, I have a picture I'm going to show in a second. And then the extension is when everything is extended out. So it's not flex, it's extended. So these two positions get confused a lot, especially with seizures. And so um, the scoring is different where you have the extension is going to be a, a more severe indication of brain damage than the flexion. And uh, a one for no response. And an NT, if it's not testable, so we think of some issues where, hey, your patient has been traumatized and they're now paralyzed. And so you're not going to get a motor response for this patient. Here's the position I was talking about, the decorticate and the decebrate. 
that's what it's called, the zebra break. Um, and so with the decorative hip posturing, you are going to have the arms abducted into each other, and you're going to have them flexed in as well. Now, look here and see that the leg positioning of the corticit and the C rebret posturing are the same. So you're going to have the knees extended and you're going to have plantar flexion with both for the feet. So we're really looking at the arm position where the decerebrate is going to have an extension of the arms and the arms are adducted or adducted um, in, the, in their positioning. So take note of that. And I hope you remember it now. So one is the flexion and one is the extension positioning. And that is going to be part of our motor response category. So now we're looking at a cumulative score. If we do all three categories and we have a cumulative score, then your mild head injury is going to range from a 13 to a 15. So if us today are getting a 15, we would consider to have a very, very low head injury. All right, very mild. A moderate head injury would be a 9 to 15, and a severe head injury would be 8 or less. Okay, so we did a quick review of the scale. I want to go into some questions so you can see actually how you are going to be applying that information to your actual NCLEX exam. So here's my first question. The nurse is assessing a 20-year-old male suspected of overdosing. He is staring off into space, shaking and babbling. As the nurse starts an intravenous therapy, he cries out and pulls his hand away. What is his Glasgow coma score? Hmm. What is his Glasgow coma score? What say if you guys? So we have here the categories because we have that the patient is, they're staring off into space, they're babbling, and then they're pulling away. All right. They're pulling away from the pain. So I see the comments on the screen and we're gonna have this thing here where the correct answer is going to be a 10. So you have the eye opening, right? They're staring off into space. So their eyes are open, right? And it's a spontaneous opening. They're, they're up. The verbal response, they're babbling. So that's going to be considered a, a, incomprehensible. And then withdrawing from the pain, withdrawing from the pain is going to be a four. It's going to be a four. Okay, so we add that up and we got 10. Now let's look at the next. Let's look at the next situation here. Question number two, you have a person fell from the fourth floor of a building. When you apply a deep sternal rub to stimulate him, he extends his arms and legs. He does not speak or open his eyes. What is his Glasgow coma score? So a person fell from the building. You got to use a sternal rub to stimulate him. When you do, he extends his arms and legs. See why it's so important for us to go over content first? Right here, because you know, you know the answer. He does not speak or open his eyes. What is his Glasgow coma score? Looking at the three categories, eyes, verbal, and motor. All right, all right. Eyes, okay, now we have this here. It is going to be, it is going to be a four. It's going to be a four because the eye opening mm, doesn't open his eyes. So he's going to get a one, remember, not a zero. And his verbal response, he doesn't speak. So he's going to get a one. And it says that he extends his arms and his legs. He extends his arms and his legs. So that is going to be, extension is going to be two, the deceabrate posturing. All right, I'm moving on. A 78-year-old client looks at you as you approach her. She tells you about her beautiful house when you asked her birth date. She grips your hand upon request 
but you notice that her left hand is a bit shaky. What is her Glasgow coma score? You just got three categories. And that's what makes this process a little bit easier because um, once you get the three down and you look at these cues, you are able to readily calculate the score. So for here, I see some of the, I see some of you guys got it right, actually. The correct answer is 13. It is 13 because you have the spontaneous eye opening. The verbal response is it's responding, but it's inappropriate. Okay, because we're talking that we asked about her birthday and she told us about her house. And the motor response is still a six because she's doing what you asked her to do. All right. Upon request, she's doing it. It doesn't matter, you know, if one side is a bit shaky or not as weak. Her motor response is a six, which means we're looking at her. We're looking at her mentation and her neurological response. Question number four. A 45-year-old male is unable to walk unassisted due to severe abdominal pain. Upon assessment, he reports that the pain started two hours ago. He lies flat on the stretcher as instructed, but later flexes his legs as guarding behavior. What is the Glasgow coma score? Mm-hmm. So if we are looking at what we're given here, we are going to render that the verb, the eye opening is pretty good. Okay. The verbal, hmm, the verbal is pretty good, right? So we have eye opening at a four, the verbal at a five, and then the motor at a six. He's doing everything we require him to do. Okay, guys, let us go to the next question. This is question number five. An intoxicated person was found lying on the ground, difficult to awaken. When the responder pinches his arm, the person slaps him. The person does not speak. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is an interesting case here. But we're not going to get a very high number, okay? This person's Glasgow Coma score is a seven. Yes, a seven because their eyes are open. They're difficult to awaken, all right? The person does not respond, so they get a one, but they slap the person, right? So they're going to be getting some movement right here. And um, even though it wasn't requested, they're able to localize that painful stimuli, all right? And they're going to move, they're going to, they're going to get that person, okay? So we have here, we have here a five, okay? Um, and again, five is because it was the painful stimuli that actually attracted the, um, that attracted the response, the motor response. Okay. Hey guys, listen, we did a quick study session, which is what Win the Wednesdays is all about. It's about making sure that you get over the hump into the weekend with your studying completed, or at least you're feeling pretty good about it. If you want to talk to me about NCLEX more, you can text the word NCLEX to 855-696-0132. Again, Let's get the conversation about what you need started at 855-696-0132. Thank you guys so much for studying with me tonight. I appreciate all the time you take out and what you invest into the Remark community because it is literally changing people's lives. And I can't wait until you get your nursing license. I want to know who's next, who's next. And as always, you can, you will, and you must pass in clicks. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.